everyone in the sixth step of uh, snowflake tower i will show you as i promised you in the previous video to make the form to uh, slab custom node that uh, i added uh, and i used in the last uh, video that allow you actually to change that uh, form or that mass into a slab horizontal slabs uh, or to just make it like a, a layer uh, a layer modeling um, it's really a useful uh, really useful uh, custom node uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, show you how or actually model it here in the in the main uh, dynamo environment rather than creating it in the custom node and then I'm gonna open the custom node that I, 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 sh I actually made a couple of uh, months ago and explain it for you but before I just uh, have two of those snowflake parameter uh, outlines and I generated this uh, uh, this basic uh, loft um, I'm just gonna turn off the turn off the solid that I made so this is the first one and just uh, the original one that I we, that I made before and I just uh, connect them uh, by a list as you can see it's just moving that with the geometry translate upward 350 meters and then I just generate a list and from the list I just uh, created uh, a form as you can see so I want to slice that form to make slabs uh, with a specific thickness or just make uh, uh, slice that each 5 meter or each 10 meter depend on uh, what you want and I just explained that in the previous uh, uh, video anyway so coming back to this I think it's easy for you that's the setting if you want to do the same thing exactly so that's uh, just closing or zooming into those settings so you can have uh, go and model the same thing if you are interesting or just place the model you like now we need uh, we need to create this guy again here I, I don't want to double click on it and open it now I'll, I'll open it at the end of the video anyway but let me show you here in a live example so you have better understanding rather than just show you the setting of it so what we really need to do is to create a horizontal plane an array of them starting from the lowest point to the highest point of the tower and then find the intersection between those reference planes array or vertical array of a reference plane uh, with this geometry so basically we need uh, let's say we need to understand that we have an input so I can right click and have my slider here uh, going with a numerical slider, let's go that um, this, for example, it's a building height. And let's say the building height is, I don't know, 5 meters or something. So that's been said. Uh, I can just go ahead and copy it with uh, continuous control and shift. And I can make this building total height. Uh, let's say actually level height. So which one is wrong? That's the level height, of course, and that's the building height. I'd rather go for the building total height, and let's let's say the building overall height. I don't know, 300 meter or something. I can just go ahead and have a look at this. This is technically 350. So instead, let's make something. Uh, I can take this guy here and this guy again here so instead of having this a fixed number or a code block I can just give it this a 350 connect this to the translate in Z so I'm, I'm gonna use it twice to generate the, the form here and also to use the you know the node that I want to create or the custom node that I want to create so we need an array so again double click here it's a basic uh, code block so what we're gonna need is to start from a zero to a dot b so any x and y or a and b any variables so a is the overall building height and b is the jump or the the steps or the intervals so you need that to be five for example and of course you can't see anything because it's, it's actually happening inside this form or inside this solid so probably it would be a good idea to turn off the preview for that and oops uh, as you can see here nothing happened yet because it's just created a list of numbers but anyway good idea that I turn it off already 
So that's the sequence being generated from zero to God knows how much, ah, 350, and it's jumping each five. Beautiful. So now, as you, you see, nothing has been shown yet because it's just, just a sequence of numbers. Now we need a plane by origin. So as, as you just create this guy immediately, if you keep zooming in, you're gonna find it has been generated with this, you know, uh, zero zero zero. So you see, it's, it's asking you for an origin, and that origin is a point, as you can see. And it's the default value for it is a zero zero. So again, we can understand that this guy need points. So again, points. That's what we need. Uh, I don't know why it was not writing anything. Yeah, that's as you can see. So that's the points. I'm not going to change x and y. I'm going to just leave this to the z or z and then connect this guy to the origin. And when you do so, it's this, this guy just generated those points and then those points became the origin. And here we go. We have our planes all the way starting from the lower section ending up with the highest one. And that's the beauty of sharing this guy because when you change this, it's gonna be you know that goes down and those goes down with it. So, so anyway, so now we have our planes generated. Now we need a, a very simple geometry intersection. You can search it here or just right click and just say intersection. And it's gonna jump here somewhere. It's saying geometry intersection. Even the plane, even the, the sample or the image is actually explaining what we want. It's just giving us a plane here, and it's a, a geometry that we find the intersection. Uh, that's nice about uh, Dynamo. So we're gonna go like that's my geometry. Those are my planes, and that might be a, a bad thing to be you know to do is just put this on automatic. But anyway, it's not going to take too much long time as long as it's not being connected to Revit. So it's not going to generate an actual families in Revit. That's why I even closed the gap to Revit. I have it running here in the background, as you can see. Those you see, it's just a ghosting geometry. It's not a physical geometry. That's why uh, not a big deal if you keep this on automatic for now. But if you're dealing with adaptive component, that would be a really bad idea. Anyhow. So, you see now, what I created is just, you see, just the planes, and those planes is actually, sorry, it's just the intersection between those planes and the geometry, and they are basically surfaces, so if you open this, you're going to find those uh, surfaces. I was expecting to be honest in outlines or polylines, but anyway, so that's what this uh, provided for us, which is so far so good. So probably you need to have a uh, thickness. Uh, so that's the thickness. You can add a normal thickness one way or uh, just this guy, uh, a thickness both sides. And that might sound more useful. And again, make no sense by that type of uh, delay each time you change something. So probably it would be a good idea to turn off the automatic into a manual. Uh, so I'm gonna go manual, and again it's in surface, so again connect those guys to it. Thickness, uh, you can go ahead and have your own uh, slider and uh, numerical one. Uh, probably have the minimum value to go to minus one or whatever. So you can go, let's say minus 0.3, so minus value, so if you have the, the plane in here, as you can see, it gonna goes from the plane, the thickness of this downward instead of upward. That might make more sense. So that's my thickness. And here it need a, a Boolean, so it's either true or false, telling that you need this to be go up and down the plane. The, the the extrusion process or the thickening process so I will just go ahead and ha and ask for a boolean 
and that guy I think, uh, sorry this guy is true and false, false so it knows that all of this value should go one way which is downward so now we can go ahead and miserably hit on run and see my old machine here how long it takes to generate those a couple of hundreds of slabs uh, just again a dynamo geometry it's not a real physical rivet slabs uh, I'll show you next uh, how to do that in Rivet. I actually explained that in a couple of videos before, but anyway. Still waiting for this old machine. Don't freak out again when you see this, not responding. Usually it happens when you have this kind of situation. So if you are not really sure from whatever you're doing here, it's, it might be a good idea to have a lower value. So instead of 5 that I added for the height of the level, you might give it a 15. So you get less slabs, which is less time to calculate. And when you really see this, you know, the, the coding you do is correct, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, add any crazy number and you wait for it and instead of waiting for a longer time and then you're getting a, an incorrect result or not finished coding uh, really dealing smart with uh, you know the way you deal with that is much better rather than waiting as you can see good so again zooming a little bit in and now you can see that each five meter it's generate on the slab uh, on the reference plane actually and from this reference reference plane downward it's almost 0.3 meter and jumping each five meter so that's my actual slice it's just morphing or changing the shape from the lower one to the upper one and give you the slice automatically you don't need to figure out what's happening uh, that's what actually rivet do if you have your array and generate uh, you know slabs based on the conceptual mass it's the same it's the same thing as you can see that's uh, that monster here so this is uh, this is actually what you know what uh, the slab to sorry or the form to slab uh, node is all about it's very easy it's just uh, uh, level uh, level slider building total height slider a very basic array here and then send that to a point by coordinate on Z that goes for an original of uh, plane origin normal creating an array of point with array of uh, planes around it then giving to the geometry intersect that goes for drawing a surface for each plane and then that surface get the thickness to make it an independent solid that's what I prefer here to show you in the dynamo environment rather than going to the custom node environment but anyway just to make you happy uh, that's the form to slab as you can have a look at in here that's my inputs I designed and that's the output the solid so double click on it and voila nothing happened <laughs> that changed the name so we have to double click inside uh, so yep see here that's how you do the imports uh, that's to see the that's to see the value actually and that's name it giving an array so that's the 0 dot a dot b to make the, the sequence of numbers I just on purpose did not model that so you know in the in the custom node environment because it, you can't see and you can't tell the number you can't run it so that's why I didn't do it here but anyway, so you have a look at the original one that I use. Slab thickness here, I just multiply by a minus one to get the negative value downward. I don't know why I, I know because it's, it's a variable number. So whatever you're going to give an, an 0.3 or 2.5, whatever number you gave it, just switch it to minus to consider it. And then a, a form selector, that's an import, all of them. And that's my plane by origin normal. And I just created a point, jumping it up and then use the translate geometry translate it's a slightly bit different method uh, and it is just the base on a point in the in the lower uh, zero zero and then I just translate or just copy that vertically uh, it's, it's nice to see each time you model something you just create in a different method it's really crazily nice 
uh, to you know not not restrict yourself in one method and then the geometry intersect and then the surface thicken with a boolean and you can see that the thickness is just taken from the minus a minus one which is the slab thickness input and all that get in one output which is this guy so that's why I'm happy with it so if I close this guy just get back to you know this which is what we've done so far anyway that's uh, it guys for this video and I really advise you to go ahead and uh, model uh, a form to slab but this time a vertical one so you can make both horizontal and vertical uh, you know mesh or, or uh, intersected geometries if you want to make a, a laser cutting model out of that it might be a good exercise for you anyway uh, thank you for watching uh, appreciate if you can like and share that video thank you for uh, watching again and uh, have a good day bye bye